The Stonewall Inn, the birthplace of the start of the gay rights movement, by Brittany Sow and Yoselin Aguilar. On June 28, 1969, the start of the gay rights movement was born. On 53 Christopher Street, New York, the riot took place in the Greenwich Village, Manhattan. Little did they know the police would be stopping for a visit. What exactly was the reason why the police had thrown through the bar claiming they were there for other reasons? Why wasn't homosexuality accepted in the United States? Why were the rioters furious with what the police had done? What was the Stonewall in specifically? How did this riot start? Taking place nearly six decades ago, the start of the Gay Rights Liberation Front had occurred. The rioters have fought for what they believed in, for what was right, and for whom they are. This was the start of the Stonewall Riot. Just after two in the morning, four policemen had strolled to the bar, straight towards the employees eyeing the place. The customers inside the Stonewall had tried to act casual, as if this was a regular hangout instead of a gay bar, but that didn't work out well. With the clothes they wore and the tension that was rising in the air, this was no ordinary club the police had just thrown upon. This was a Stonewall Inn, home to many homosexuals. They went straight towards the employees while the customers were asked to be escorted outside. Locals say the reason the police had come across this gay bar was because of serving liquor without a license, but we know that is not the real reason why. The police have claimed they have been watching over the storm for quite a while now. The police department have been targeting gay clubs throughout the city of New York. Each gay club they have found has been shut down. The Stonewall Bar was one of the most visited gay clubs throughout the city of New York. Fred Tree was one of the most gays who was at the Stonewall when the police had walked in. Fred and his friends, Charlie and Frank, had fought their way out through a side door. On the outside, there had been a few of gays like them outside throwing whatever they could find at the police. Within an hour, there had been about 100 people outside, both straight and gay. Fred states that they were having a great time hurling items at the police, but they had gone back inside the bar. They had set garbage cans on fire and had thrown the garbage cans at the windows towards the bars. The police riot had arrived in upcoming minutes. The rioters had ran as fast as they can up Christopher Street and towards a restaurant called Mama's Chicks and Ribs. They had stayed at Mama's until the riot had calmed down. Neighbors whom were stirred had helped the gays stay hidden away from the police who were searching. The police had exited with all the employees arrested. They were told to be seated inside the paddy wagon while the police had entered the bar once again. This time they had come up with three of their own, three drag queens to be exact. One of those drag queens was Sylvia Rivera. She was well known to the customers and had worked hard to fight against homosexual rights. As the drag queens entered one by one into the paddy wagon, someone into the crowd had thrown a glass bottle towards the police and has made contact with the ground with a loud clink. The crowd took this as a sign to fight back at the police, so that's what they had done. The riot was created. Trash cans were being lit afire, shot glasses were being thrown in midair, coins were being thrown at the victims, the police. Anything the crowd had thrown was becoming a threat to the police. For the sake of their own safety, they ran and tried to find shelter. The drag queens took this as a sign to join the ride and to fight back for what they believed was right. They fought back throwing beer bottles, coins, cans, shot glasses, and some folks say they even own undergarments. For all we know, this was not one quiet riot. The crowd had expanded to an estimated amount of 200 people to a fairly close amount of 500 people the first night. The following night, 700, and the night following that, an estimated amount of 1,000 people. The crowd was a mix to lesbians, gays, transgenders, straights, and bisexuals. There were teens, adults, and even elders. They had all fought together as a whole. They were no longer fighting for what they, because they were singing mad, but because they were fighting for true what was right, right. And that was for all gays to be treated equally like the rest of the people in the world. Once backup had arrived, the police had tried to take control of the crowd once again. That didn't work out so well. The crowd didn't listen, so the police had to take matters into their own hands. They had grabbed the boy who had thrown a bottle towards a police officer and had started to club him. A little part of the crowd stopped and stared until someone had screamed, Save our sisters! The crowd had hurled their weapons to the police until they had let go of the boy. The police had no choice but to run and take shelter, so that's what they had done. The crowd was in control again. More after more, the crowd had begun to expand. At first, it was all gays until a group of tourists had come around to see what was happening. They had joined the ruckus commotion and had taken a disliking towards the police right now. The crowd had grown so large, they had taken up all of Christopher Street and part of 7th Avenue. Traffic was impossible to go through within the crowd. 
It was nearly impossible to walk through the crowd of gays and straights. An elder had tried to walk through the crowd when she was shoved down. The people around her offered to help her when she brushed them off with fear as she trembled. It must be the full moon. It must be the full moon. She got up and tried her best to walk through the crowd again. Stop that bus! The crowd had screamed once the bus driver had honked their horn, telling the crowd to move aside. One person had stepped in front of the moving bus and got an advertisement card and thrown it at the windshield. The bus driver had stopped the bus immediately and filed out of it as quickly as possible. The crowd poured out onto the street and began to pound on the now empty bus. Christopher Street belongs to the Queens. Liberate the street. The crowd had begun singing and shouting words that would express how they would feel about being gay. Gay power, they would say, or even we want freedom now, and equality for homosexuals. This seemed to catch people's attention who were not part of the riot because they were once curious onlookers and now they were part of the riot. The police got the crowd to lay off the bus, but they had begun to slow down traffic. They had blocked the streets with a wave of people who helped fight against the riot. A human line had blocked the streets, causing traffic to stop and let through one car at a time. A fairly amount of police cars had arrived, stopping at the corners of each street. The riot was being took place. Two cops had sat in this vehicle, eyeing the crowd. Someone from the crowd had thrown a stack of wet garbage at the window of the police car and landed right on the face of one of the police who was in that vehicle. The crowd had ripped and it had fallen off the face, dripping with soggy coffee grounds. The police had never left one thing off his face, and that was the screw you look. A middle-aged lady, along with her husband, had come upon a police. She said that the police should be ashamed of himself. Don't you know that these people have no place to go and need a place like that, Bob? Two hours later, she was seen with her husband and two other couples running with a large group of gays away from the nightsticks that were used as a threat towards the homosexuals by the tactical police department. Two heavy police reinforcements cleared out Sheridan Square area of the Greenwich Village when large crowds of young men were angry because police had raided an inn caused by homosexuality. The young men had swept through the area and this had led to one of the many riots that had took place the following night against homosexuality. With their arms linked, one row of policemen with helmets were stretching across the width of the street. This had made several sweeps up and down Christopher Street in between the Avenue of Americas and 7th Avenue South. The crowd had fought back and created a line of their very own behind the one long stretch of policemen that were confident the crowd would retreat. Only that did not happen. The police did not withdraw until 4 o'clock in the morning. A handful of people who did not get out of the police's way fast enough were either shoved along or were being beaten by a club to the ground. The crowd fought to help save their sisters by throwing stones and bottles to the police line. Twice had the police broken the chains to charge into the crowd. Three people had gotten arrested because of the charges along the lines of harassment to orderly conduct. The crowd had formed into its group once again and gathered across the street from the Stonewall Inn. The police had raided through the bar early on Saturday the following days. They had thought differently the wrong way about the case that showed no proof for the reason to harass homosexuals. The Stonewall Inn had come to an end once the police had thought differently. About 200 people had gathered up in the Stonewall Inn after the continuous nights of the riots. Men who were wearing plain clothes were under search warrant authorizing illegal sales of alcohol. 400 youths were ensued, a partial riot mobilization conducted by the police department, and 30 people were arrested. The Stonewall Inn was the death of Judy Garland. No one knows the exact reason why to the cause of her loss. Some folks state that this was the last straw towards the brutality against gays. Some even state that this, that it was because the abuse caused by the police. It is unknown. No one knows the real reason to what the cause of her death was. The Stonewall Inn was the start of the gay rights movements. It had led to the many people fighting for what they had believed in and for what was right. This was the first protest against homosexuality against in the United States. Many of the states had agreed to the same liking and gender is now legal. In some states, though, it still may not be authorized. Same-sex marriage is now welcomed in some states located in the United States. Some people may still discriminate against gays, but it has improved over time. It had led to the start of the Lesbian, Bisexual, Gays, and Transgender Club. It was one of the clubs that had helped motivate people to support gay rights. This had led to many other gay groups, too. After the riot, a large ranking of people had begun to support homosexuals. One to fifty clubs were made from 1969 to 1973, and more clubs were created later on in life. There has been a flag that had been cre uh, created for gays. It is one flag for every color of the rainbow. Red stood for life, orange stood for healing, yellow stood for sunlight, green stood for nature, royal blue stood for serenity, and violet stood for spirit.
The flies had showed Gaze that they were not harassed the same way as they were before. Because of this riot, it had sparked the gay rights movement. Because of this riot, it had given birth to the gay rights revolution.